Welcome back to our coverage of the EV Festival 2020 and of course as I said last time I wasn't actually there due to circumstances beyond my control but um, John Bates ably substituted for me and started off by interviewing the organiser of the event and uh, someone I spoke to a couple of weeks ago on my State of the EVs in the UK interviews. So here's John with Paul. So I'll go. What, what? What can you tell us about how you found the uh, electric vehicle festivals uh, this year and last year and obviously you've had complications with the weather last year, Covid and the weather, the glorious sunshine this year. It's certainly been an entertaining <laughs> year hasn't it? It's yeah. certainly been a very difficult year for everybody. Um, I wanted to put on something that says in a new normal what can be possible and I think today we've accomplished that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's completely different and I think, I think what would have been last year is this year it's got to be different <laughs> and I suppose the two are, are going to end up being um, I suppose two different entities. I suppose. Yes. Um, I wanted a low, lower turnout and controlled numbers. We've achieved that at the same time with everybody I, I believe at the minute anyway. I've been a good day. No, it's, it's, it's been excellent. I mean, certainly uh, our iPage group here have had a really good time and a chat with uh, amongst ourselves with other people has been, uh, been, been really good. Uh, I would also like to hear, obviously, you know, what your thoughts are. You know, now you've had the two festivals, presumably you know, next year's can be bigger and better. Yeah, we had an original plan um, this year and, as you can imagine, uh, we had a lot more interest off manufacturers at the start of the year. Yeah. And a lot more people generally uh, showing interest after getting your first one. It's always a difficult one out of the way. Um, it's been a good achievement. Um, it certainly has been a big achievement, Paul. A lot of hard work when you see putting this together in a very short period of time. So, yeah. Many thanks, Paul, for pulling this off. Anyway, John next spoke to some of the other iPace owners at the event. BMW. Not, not, not talking about the deep depreciation, followed by uh, a Mercedes plug in hybrid and uh, 350. And I like the electric aspect of the hybrid, i.e., the performance you get out of the and the economy. And I just thought, well, the next logical step is an EV. Uh -huh. uh, and I'd gone around looking for a replacement. Mercedes and I've gone back to Mercedes at the time where withdrawal where I was manufacturers sort of withdraw a drivetrain and that start thinking about the next product so they didn't I couldn't have had a night for that. So I went to the BMW garage thinking I might have a look at a 530 here which is the five series I had a test drive but it was very nice. And then the Jaguar dealership was just around and I'd heard I'd heard about my summer of 2018 so we weren't any on the road but one look at it well, ordered it absolutely untested haven't even driven it not driven it at all i think people need to think about when they get an ev any ev they're probably driving a car with more performance than they've ever driven mm. yeah. and there's actually in my mind you know, there's some good things that you people should be learning about okay if you've got a car that can do 0 to 60 in under five seconds you need to treat it with some respect because you know you, this, this, you can suddenly be doing because it's so silent as well you can be doing 70 miles an hour in a 50 zone and not even knowing that you're doing yeah and you've, and you've, you've just, just got to be just careful, careful, having having careful. careful. Yeah. and not about breaking the law but it's about driving within your skills as well yes. i've never had the chance to drive one of these on a track some people i know you oh you had the art performance thing yeah uh, and, uh, Absolutely I wish I had. I wish I had <laughs> because I would then possibly trust it even more. You know, it's got great grip, great yeah. control. You can put it into corners quite quickly, but I, I tend to be quite risk averse. Yeah. Well, certainly I find my my driving capabilities are less than the capabilities of the car. Exactly. Yeah. I, I kick it out long before the tyres start giving up. Exactly. <laughs> but it, you know, it is an intoxicating drive. Isn't it? It's a bit of a cliche, it's great fun. Um, and it over a year 
and I still look forward to driving it. I still get in it. I go, this is a great place to be and a great car to drive. Fabulous. Hi. From your perspective, so yeah. uh, to your, to your I'm Nick. Um, we went to um, Diesel. My wife loves four wheel drives. She likes sitting up high. And, uh, nice bit to get around in the snow and do have it. Uh, we we got a Mitsubishi plug in hybrid, which uh, we saw the writing on the wall about diesels, so we thought we'd try that. And it's my wife st still got it and loves it. Um, but very soon I realised I'd like to have more electric range, 30 miles still so quickly runs out, but then the petrol engine cuts in and it works very well. So uh, I then decided I'd also fancy changing my uh, I'd a bit, um, Mercedes. Sports SLK, which I was getting a bit tired. I found very low on the ground, hard ride. So I was well, I bought myself a Leaf, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And um, but then I thought I'd go, I'd fancy something longer range, so to be able to um, use for holidays instead of the Mitsubishi and do all electric. And when I saw the uh, the spec advertised back in, I think it was. Uh, Oh, was it 17? I think they first talked about it. I put a deposit down um, in October 17, and then we got invited to um, Solid Hull to see the un unveiling. <laughs> and then I didn't see, I uh, didn't have a test drive until um, I think it was the summer of when my dealership got a one in um, the summer of 18. Um, I didn't get my car till. Um, January 19. So I've had it 19 months now, and I've been very lucky. It hasn't, it hasn't let me down at all, and it's been 100% reliable. Um, and I just love it, and the electric driving. I mean, I just, I love the one-pedal driving. You know, I, I feel if I touch the brake pedal, I'm doing something wrong. Um, and the performance and the grip of the Jaguar. I mean, as you say, they, they race them, you know, the, um, the, you know, sort of a lightweight version without all the padding, you know, is, is what they race with the 4 belly. Um, and, uh, yes, I, I, I wouldn't go back to uh, a stub of saying electric, and also it's so cheap to run. If you charge on off-peak, I've got a, a cheap off-rate of um, under 5 pence a unit, and it works out at only under 2 pence, we'll say 2 pence a mile. Pretty good going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you've got a nice car with a similar performance. Oh, yeah. We know yeah you're doing about 15 to the go. Yeah. <laughs> and I like now, I don't have to uh, go and uh, play with those dirty petrol or diesel pumps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, most of the charging is done at home, and it's done a lot. put myself out at all. It's just plug it in at night, and in the morning it's fully charged. I think uh, people don't seem to realise the advantages of that. And, no, uh, until you've had an EV, you don't uh, really see that, do you? And it's this. Uh, again, we, 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 we came from a Leaf, got a, got a Leaf as a second car, and within a month it was, oh, hang on a minute, yeah, this is yeah, it's so smooth. Yeah. Well, once yeah. we got the Leaf, uh, the Mitsubishi hardly gets used. Yeah. In fact, now, you know, uh, when we go out and long run, it's, it's a, the Jag, the high pace is used mainly. I think Mitsubishi have, have missed the point, they should have done a, a full electric version. Hmm. Because it's already four, it's two, four wheel drive with two electric motors, and if they had a pure, pure, pure electric version of the uh, uh, Outlander, I think it would sell. But now Mitsubishi are pulling out of you. Yeah. Which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah. I was going to say, John, aren't you going to say something? <laughs> well, yeah, so, so handover process. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, similar to yourselves, I've been looking into this for. Years, so I'd, uh, uh, I've, I've already said that. Yeah, the leaf is the right, I'm going to replace my XF is going to be all electric again. It was saying, yeah, sort of saw the specs and stuff, it should, should be really good. Got involved, uh, did the art performance tour, thrashed it around Open Park, yeah, handling unbelievable at speed, and uh, yeah, the marks really undulating. You, know, you, 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 you didn't get a chance to really try it out. Uh, great, yeah. Deposited, went to the reveal, solid hull, all the rest of it. The only problem was that, yeah, when, once it finally comes out, slightly more than we <laughs> wanted to wanted to spend, decided we'd leave it a bit. Uh, but 
yeah, it's so I've been researching it for ages. So luckily, hand over up to point, it was a case of I was I was able to tell the salesman probably almost as much as yeah. he could tell me. Having said that, it's, it's just the little nitty gritty. I get in the car, and he said, "Well, yeah, COVID. Yeah, really, we're supposed to just throw the keys at you and say, we talk through the window." And uh, and interestingly, yeah, despite that, I haven't asked for it just before the uh, yeah, I'm still on the 90 day software. So I said, mm, yeah. Could, could, you, know, you need to need to push the software, so they toddled off, came back, turned out to be uh, the S twenty B. So uh, start started right off on that. Uh, he showed me some of the bits to f find the bit for turning the uh, the sound on and off, which are <laughs> things like that to play with on on the way home. Um, but yeah, the handover was a lot of it was. Yeah, looking at me, you know, I, I knew what I was doing, so I think that is probably the problem. And I think even if you do get a bit of a handover, you you can't you can't remember it all. So that's where things like the the, the Jaguar video that they've got now, the, the guy talking through us handover procedures, good in the forums, because it, the, there is a lot to learn, not a tech, uh, and uh, you know it's like anything else until you're actually doing it for real. Read, reading it in the eye guide manual stuff doesn't really make sense until you're actually, you're actually doing it doing it for real uh, but yeah had it just over a couple of weeks and it's been uh, well it's exceeded expectations because i knew you would have liked to try but i've not i've not i've not actually driven with the head-up display love the matrix lights at night Going out the witchcraft, don't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely fabulous. Way, yeah, you expect a room to flash it at you because you can see everything. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. creating the cone for the other cars, abs absolutely brilliant. But again, I'm not a play with that. So again, I was really pleased that I thought it'd be good. Yeah, really, even, uh, even, really interesting. Even pre-COVID, the handover was fabulous with the cup revolving stage and all this camera. But they didn't really tell us much about the car. They did so. Because they knew that, well, I don't know if these boys were their toys or what it is, but we all seem to check it all out before and, play with and it. And as you say, often though, a little bit more than the dealer. But our dealer in Keynes, he said, just take it away and come back with it in a couple of weeks and make a list of the questions and I'll go through the questions. That was a nice way to yeah. handle it because Covid makes things different. It, it does make it a bit different, but again, my salesman. Yeah, you know, he phoned me back after a week. Right, have you found things? Sure. Anything you want to know? Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I'm due another phone call shortly. He said, he'd get, "Yeah, he'd be calling me after a month to see how things have got on." I think customer service is quite good with Jaguar and Jaguar in general. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's a shame with COVID and obviously things like with the electric festival today. Obviously, we would have been a lot more cars and things, but it, yeah, it's been uh, yeah, nicely set up, glorious weather. Uh, and it, and it, it is way interesting. better than last year, and, um, but we're just squeezed in a bit by the commercials. Is it, is it boys and their toys with these cars? Yes, mostly boys <laughs> and their toys. But you are looking for your next vehicle, aren't you? I am looking for that, yeah. yeah. So Lee's finishes uh, in February, so we're looking to see what else, maybe. I mean, I love driving it. Like I say, the lights at night, that's lovely enough to dip your headlights because yeah, you've got these yeah. foyer. And uh, it's a nice high ride for a small person. Yeah. So what particular junction near where we live is quite a tight bend and you can always see what's coming. No problem in this, yeah. I can see all the time. So my wife's only five foot and she loves sitting up high. She would yes. not go back to a, a low car. Although, you know, I do like the saloon car. Um, never driven an SUV before, so that's quite an experience. And certainly when we did the test drive, I couldn't believe the acceleration. I sat in the back, it was like G-Force. Um, I thought, that's going to be fun. <laughs> so, yeah. so do you enjoy, do you make use of that or do you poodle about a bit more? Oh, I tend to poodle. It's Jonathan every now and again. It's suddenly going to uh, go, that mode. On a smart motorway, we go, I'm trying it out. <laughs> Actually, I, just, I had a good experience or interesting experience in January 19 when I got the car. My first run down for long run was done. Down there after recharging, um, suddenly found the heat just stuck on, blasting out, nothing wrong, dust it. Rung the Jaguar dealer and they said, Well, try get out and it up and rebooting. And that was a very good advice. And a lot of people can get around any problems of warning lights coming on, you know, before you start calling up, you know, getting recovery, just lock it up, let it reboot and start again. 
that was a good one. And then on the way back, we got caught in Bodmin in what they called a snow bomb, where heavy rain suddenly turned to a blizzard. And I found myself on a hill, going up a hill, and the cars coming down towards me were losing control and banging into parked cars. So I and other cars going up the hill, we pulled off and onto the grass verge, and we just stayed there, and the road was just chaos. Um, which quickly became an ice rink. I read about the instructions, got the manual out, because I hadn't you know, read everything. I discovered I could press the right buttons, put it into off-road, low traction control, and I found the I-Pace could climb all the way up the hill on the grass verge, with the wheels just twitching, finding a grip on any wheel. I got to the top of the hill and went back on the road, and I was away. Otherwise, I would have been marooned until they had cleared the road and got us all moving. Is that with the suspension, with the hydraulic? Uh, yeah, the, but it was mainly to do with the traction control. Oh, yeah. No spinning. Yeah, because you can, you can set it to a low speed. Yes, sort of. When I first pulled off, although I had control. Yeah. I first pulled off under the verge, although we had four-wheel drive, um, I still was spinning, and I was booting in a bit because I was on the soft stuff oh. on grass verge. But turning the setting to off-road, it just climbed its way up. Every wheel was just twitching, not spinning, just twitching where you could get a grip, and just went slowly up, all the way up, and it was very, very impressive. And it got me out of trouble, really. It meant that evening we got to the hotel we'd booked into at uh, um, Peyton, plugged in for the night, <laughs> and in the morning everything was better, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's uh, yeah, one of the things I'm sort of interested in. One of the reasons I spec 18 inch wheels yeah. was because yeah, we do get a little bit of snow uh, and, and peat where I am, and uh, yeah, we can get a bit airy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electric games, yeah, all wheel, all wheel drive, and then traction control. So, so if you're getting that on, 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 the, on the 20 inch rib, the 18 inch, and theoretically, yeah. yeah. And these yeah. Are, yeah, they're all so, uh, ice and yeah. snow mode. It's something different. Well, yes. Well, there's ice and snow, but there's a little fringe. It's on the modes. Different modes. Yeah. Well, it's top one of the modes there. Yeah. It's the top mode, I so think it is. Go, yeah. So, up from eco. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a pushing control mode. Yeah, but there's also a low speed. So, yeah. your dial up like 10 miles an hour is the speed yeah. you want to do. I mean, I didn't even do that. I didn't really do it itself. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to get the manual. I've got air yeah. suspension, so I didn't bring it up on the suspension. But it was more the fact that that electric motor just controlled and no spinning. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Gary. Yeah. 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 Miss, <laughs> missing you, Gary. A bit. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> next year if you're bothered. <laughs> where indeed well my thanks to Joyce, Jonathan, Richard, Nick, and John. Um, far enjoyed that. If you have enjoyed it as well, please give it a like, please subscribe, it really helps the channel, and I'll see you next time.